Hello, this is Sarah from Bloomfield Analysis. And in this video, I want to show you how to create a timeline. Um, and you can do this in Google Sheets or Excel. They are very similar. I'm going to be doing it in Google Sheets. Um, it's quite a long video, so we're going to do it in two parts. This is part one. The original um, inspiration if you will, was that Google Sheets has released a timeline view, um, which came out in November 2022. So I was actually going to show you how to use that one. However, um, if you look at this new one, you can see that um, it looks really good. You can have a look at all of your tasks down at the bottom and along the top, it's got the time and it will, it will give you a nice timeline view. But if you little bit, look a little bit closer, you will find out that it's not available for everyone. It's only available for workspace users. I find timelines really useful when managing projects. Um, and as Google themselves say, a timeline can be useful for marketing campaigns, for schedules, cross collaboration um, and lots more, especially when you create one of these automatic timelines. Then you just need one. You format it like you want it and then you just take a copy of that for every new project and you don't need to reformat. Um, it'll also do things like update the dates for you automatically and a, a few other little useful tricks that will be in here. So you just need one, one timeline forever. So in this video, we are going to learn how to build a timeline that looks a little bit like this. Um, and we'll be building it from scratch. And this will include lots of fun tricks. So we're going to use things like if formulas, conditional formatting, we're going to use some dates formulae and even the lookups. This part one is going to be mainly the if formulas and a little bit of conditional formatting. Part two will have more conditional formatting, um, more work in the date and some, some V lookups. Right, so let's create a timeline. Let's call it a timeline. Create to keep in line with Google. We're going to have two tabs, one called the plan and then the one with the timeline in the plan we're going to have our tasks um, I'm going to speed up type save the world it's going to be our final task here we'll resize that was by double clicking up here as well as the tasks we're going to have a start date and end date we're going to calculate the number of days between the start date and the end date. And we're going to also calculate the number of working days. So who wants to work weekends? The start date, we're going to start today, maybe in a couple of days time, Give some time for planning. The end date, well, it's gonna be three days later. And then the next, task is going to start a day after the last task ended and this is also going to take three days and um, we'll copy that down just as a quick way to give us some dates for the start date and the end date if you can see here this is american dates i don't like american dates it's debt it's month day year we don't want it like that let's turn it into kind of more european dates or, and we'll add the month as a three letter rather than a number so that we know when the month is so we don't have to think is that an American date or is that a European date so to do that we want to go to format then down to number and then custom date time so that was format number custom date time this is already suggesting a format for us because this is my favourite format probably. Um, it's, we're going to have day and then we're going to have a slash. So you can set slashes, you can have dashes, you can have dots. I like slashes. We're going to have month as the three letter month 
another slash and then the year and supply that then it's formatted nicely for us let's calculate the number of days between them and this is a easy formula it's days and we do the end date which is this one which is column c and then the start date like that beautiful so we've got number three days which is what we made it and then the number of working days is going to be different though so working days the formula is net work days and this is the opposite way around so before we had the end date and the start date this time we're going to go start date and then end date and, and yeah you can also fill for us thank you very much lovely um let's stick these in the center so it looks a little bit neater that's hidden here so i have to make my screen smaller for you guys right lovely that gives us all of our tasks start date end date number of days and the number of working days and now we can work on the timeline i've actually put all of that in the timeline so i'm going to move them all over to the plan over there like that I'll click up here again right so the timeline we want to have the tasks we're going to have them a little bit lower down though because we want to fit in a few um date things in there so we'll do tasks and then there we go and here we want to add in a date um the date we're going to have here is let's have the date of our first task minus five days so that we can see when we're going to start our work and then let's scroll that along oops sorry that date minus one oh sorry plus one there you go so we've got this date plus one let's add in some dates for us these take up a lot of room as you can see so find the best way is to format rotate and then rotate them up and double click go across double click and it makes it much smaller that's better it doesn't take up so much room and then if you want to do any more if you copy those dates and you paste them in it should there you go quite nicely make sure that they're the same size okay so this is a nice looking kind of template um, background where we can put our dates we want our dates to go in automatically though so what we're going to do is some nice if formulas i'm going to try and do these slowly and then kind of like break it up into stages because it's a little bit complex um so first of all we want to know when our task begins we're going to put in ones when it is our task and zeros when it's not our task so we're going to have an if formula and we're going to say if this date is equal to our start date then give me a one otherwise give me a zero that's going to be our starter so if b3 and we always want to look at row three so we're going to fix row three that is equal to our start date which is in column b and it's always going to be in column b so we'll fix the b but as we move down the tasks we want it to move so the three isn't fixed so if that date is our start date give me a one otherwise give me a zero so if i copy that and copy it over the whole area should put a one in every start date so our first one did it start on the 30th of december 30 of december nice we've got a one here and then we also want to know when it ends so we'll do that in a minute um so if our date is equal to or after our date at the top then give us a one 
otherwise gives a zero. That doesn't work because I think I've got these the wrong way around. That's right. So it's greater than or equal to. And now we should have ones from the start date all the way across. So this three days later. Now let's incorporate our end date. So for this, we want to add in an and. So we want to know if that date is greater or less than our start date and is that number B3 less than or equal to our end date? So that should be, is it in between the end date and the start date? Then give me a one. Let's copy and paste that. Copy it all the way across. And, ah, look what we got here. We didn't do our fixing. So that hasn't quite worked. So we need to fix that three in the B3. I'm gonna stick a dollar in there and we want to fix the column there. Right, copy and paste that across. That's better. So our start date for our first task is the 30th of December, finish on the 2nd of Jan. 30th of December, 2nd of Jan, and 3rd of Jan to 6th of Jan. 3rd of Jan to 6th of Jan. Lovely. Right, we've got our ones and zeros in now. What we're going to do next is colour this in so it looks a bit better. So instead of zeros and ones, we've got greys and yellows or whatever colours that you want to choose. Uh, so let's do that with conditional formatting. Let's highlight the whole area. Go okay, format, conditional formatting. And we want to say if is equal to, so applying to the whole range, if anything in that range is equal to one, make it a nice orange and also the text orange as well. So three or four down, that's beautiful. And if it's a zero, so if the cell is equal to zero, let's format it, let's do four along and four along. Beautiful. We also, when we add more tasks, so when we're going to start our party, the next day, a three day party, why not? We want that to add in automatically. So we need to copy and paste, let's copy it down to line 25, so we can add up to those tests. There we go. And this should add in automatically. Let's copy the format as well. Party, it's added in the party, lovely. Let us um, fix the window so that when you scroll along, that's better. So that's our view. We want to freeze panes, we want to freeze up to row, so up to row three, and freeze the first column. Now we can move up and down, and we can see our parties in there. And let's remove party. And this, the dates have gone but it looks a bit rubbish cray so that's going to be our next and final piece of formatting in this video so we're going to add a rule to say if the task is empty we want the cell to be white so we're going to look at we're going to start with cell five range AF13. Now let's start with cell B12 and this is going to be a custom formula. Our custom formula is, we always put equal, so we are looking at cell A12 and if cell A12 is blank what we want to do is have the text and the fill white. Let's do that and then move this rule to be the top rule because it's the most important rule. We want it to do that first. And we don't want it just to apply it to range B12. We want to go all the way up to AR and down to 25. So we want to go to 
AR25. In fact, we want to go from B, is it B3? Let's have a check. Ah, B4. B4 is where we really start. And this A12, as we move across, this will move across. So we want to fix, we're starting at B4 now, so this should actually now move to B4. But we want to fix column A, otherwise when the formatting moves across, it's looking at the other cell next to it. So there you go, that makes it nice and white. Done. So that, when we go and we add in our party, there you go, the grey is filled and the dates are filled and it's still white below. Okay. I think that's enough for today. Tomorrow what we're going to do is we're going to do some more formatting, some more colours. We want to highlight what day it is today. We want to um, add in the weekdays and um, colour in if it's Saturday and Sunday, grey them out so that we're not working weekends. And yeah, just make it look a little bit better and tidier. Thank you for listening. I hope you found it helpful. Please subscribe if you want to be notified when the second part's available. And um, if you want to download the free template, that's available on bloomfieldanalysis.com slash sting. Thanks. Bye.